Remember when there was nothing like getting on your bike and pedaling as fast as you could? You may have been a little shaky at first, but soon you mastered it and there was no bigger thrill in your life. You weren't thinking about it at the time, but what made this feat possible was your ability to master physics, balance, weight distribution, speed, and gravity. And as they say, once you've got it, it's something you never forget. Although driving a van pool is different, getting the hang of it is just a matter of understanding the extra length, height, weight, and width involved. Your primary driving vehicle probably isn't as long as a full-size passenger van. And obviously driving a van is different than driving a car. Let's examine some of these differences to see how they relate to your needs when behind the wheel. First, a commuter van pool is obviously longer. Your family car is probably similar in size to one of these passenger cars. Many vans and nine passenger vehicles are 15 to 16 feet long. The full-size passenger van is even longer. Depending on which size car you currently drive, a VPSI van can be anywhere from one to five feet longer. Be mindful of this extra length when executing turns, when changing lanes, and even when parking. To execute a turn safely, your front wheels need to be a greater distance from the curb than you're used to. When changing lanes, make sure you allow extra distance in front of other vehicles and be alert to blind spots. Over the years, some of the worst accidents VPSI has contended with occurred when drivers neglected to ensure it was safe to change lanes. Vans have substantially larger blind spots on the sides and to the rear. As such, adjust your mirrors properly and check your mirrors every three to five seconds. When checking your mirrors, lean forward in your seat to reduce the size of your blind spots and avoid driving in the blind spots of others. Whenever possible, minimize lane changes and use a passenger as a spotter. However, the driver should not solely rely on another passenger as a spotter. When parking, make it easy on yourself. Whenever possible, park so that you can drive through the space rather than having to back up first. And if you're required to parallel park, use a passenger as a spotter. Practice these maneuvers and you'll quickly get the hang of the differences in length between our vans and an automobile. A second physical difference between our vans and a car is the van's extra height. On one hand, you get a great view of the road behind the wheel of our vans, but your van's height also obstructs the view for the drivers behind you. You need to provide the extra cushion of safety not only for yourself, but also for the motorist behind you, because they cannot see traffic events developing ahead like you can. And because of the van's increased height, it has a higher center of gravity, which can cause it to tip more easily. When loading a full-size passenger van in particular, passengers should be required to fill the front seats first to reduce the shift of the vehicle's center of gravity. You should also slow to below posted speed limits for curves, turns, and freeway entry exit areas to further reduce the potential for rollover. If the van's wheels drop off the roadway, gradually reduce speed and steer back onto the roadway when it is safe to do so. Remember the four-second rule always leave a four-second cushion of space between you and the vehicle in front of you. You can estimate a four-second following distance by using a fixed object in front of you. When the vehicle in front of you passes the object, begin counting. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. If you pass the object before you reach 1,004, you should decrease your speed to increase your following distance. A panic stop by you also introduces the possibility of being hit from behind. So it's a good idea to avoid following traffic in front of you too closely. Always keep this height difference in mind, especially when making turns or using parking decks, drive through windows and car washes. A third difference a driver needs to be aware of is that a van is much heavier than most automobiles. So how will this affect your driving? Let's say this is a subcompact car. 
and this is a midsize. And this is one of our vans. Once a heavier object is set in motion, greater force is required to stop it. When a van is filled with passengers, the additional weight requires even earlier braking. When driving a van, the four second space cushion affords you the time required to start applying your brakes sooner than you would in a car in order to come to a smooth, complete stop. Because of the heavier weight of a van, you should also allow more distance to compensate for a van's slower acceleration when pulling out in traffic. Awareness of the length, height, and weight differences between your automobile and a VPSI van will help ensure a safe commute. In addition to these considerations, safe van pool driving depends upon other things as well, like keeping track of what's around the van. We already mentioned that with greater height, you get a bird's eye view of the road. But a safe commute begins even before you enter the van. Prior to leaving a parking space, take a walk around your van to check the clearances on all sides, and if you'll be backing out, to ensure that there are no obstructions behind your vehicle. You should do a more thorough inspection of your vehicle at least once a week, examining your vehicle's tires for cuts or uneven wear, checking tire pressure, proper operation of turn signals, headlights, brake and tail lights, windshield wipers, mirrors, and safety belts. Indeed, checking and maintaining proper tire pressure is one of the more important safety precautions you can take, and for this reason, VPSI includes a tire pressure gauge with each vehicle we provide. Tires can lose one pound per square inch, or PSI, per month under normal driving and weather conditions. Tires can lose an additional one pound per square inch for every 10 degree Fahrenheit temperature drop. Don't rely upon visual inspections of your tires alone, especially in winter months, where significant drops in tire pressure can occur. Even trained mechanics could have a hard time distinguishing between a properly inflated tire and one which is significantly underinflated. Rely on a good tire gauge for an accurate reading. For accuracy, always check your air pressure with a tire gauge when the tires are cold. Driving even relatively short distances heats up tires, potentially making the readings inaccurate. Refer to the manufacturer's recommended air pressure listed on a sticker on your van's driver's side door jam for the proper cold tire pressure levels, which are often different for the front and rear tires. If you're uncertain about where to locate tire inflation information or cannot find the manufacturer's tire pressure recommendations, call your local VPSI customer service center for assistance. Remember, with the extra weight you carry in your van pool, tires can become dangerously overloaded when underinflated. Check your vehicle's tire pressure weekly. Always check and make necessary adjustments to mirrors before you start driving. VPSI full-size vans are equipped with convex side mirrors and rear window lenses to help eliminate blind spots when driving. While driving, it's a good idea to check your mirrors every three to five seconds and lean forward when necessary to reduce the size of your blind spots. Finally, think of your passengers as your co-pilots. Ask them for guidance when you're backing up, changing lanes, or parking, bearing in mind, however, that the ultimate responsibility belongs to you. Of course, no discussion about safely operating a van pool would be complete without talking about defensive driving. We know you're a safe driver. You are approved to drive a VPSI van based upon your good driving record, and only pre-approved drivers are permitted to operate our vehicles. But here are some defensive driving tips that specifically pertain to driving our vans. Make sure you and your passengers are wearing safety belts correctly. VPSI requires that safety belts be worn at all times without exception. Safety belts are the vehicle's most important safety feature, designed to reduce the risk of serious injury in the event of an accident. A passenger's refusal to wear a safety belt should be immediately reported to your local VPSI office. Always obey the posted speed limits. Never drive faster than road and weather conditions safely permit for a larger vehicle. You should reduce your speed and increase your following distance in adverse weather conditions. Hydroplaning can occur at any time the road is wet and at speeds as low as 30 miles per hour. If your vehicle begins to hydroplane, reduce your speed, but do not brake as it could force you into a skid. Unexpected occurrences can happen to the best, most alert of drivers in any type of vehicle. For example, if your wheels drift onto the shoulder of the road, slow down gradually, letting up on the accelerator while steering the vehicle straight ahead. 
If you must brake, do so gradually and gently. Hard panic braking or attempting to re-enter the flow of traffic too quickly could result in a dangerous loss of control. Pull back onto the roadway only when you've reduced your speed to a point where it is safe to do so and when traffic conditions permit. Never operate a vehicle if you feel sleepy or are taking medications that list drowsiness as a potential side effect, as some of these may decrease your reaction time. If you feel tired or you're taking medication that may bring on sedation, please ask one of your approved backup drivers to handle the day's driving duties. Increasingly, public safety experts are coming to the conclusion that simply using, but especially handling, a cellular telephone while operating a vehicle is an unsafe practice. VPSI agrees with this position and prohibits drivers from using cellular telephones while operating our vehicles. Indeed, many states now outlaw the use of cell phones by vehicle drivers unless configured in a hands-free arrangement. Allow yourself a greater margin for error. You never know what the other guy is going to do. Give yourself greater room for stopping, changing lanes, entering traffic, and turning. Always keep your wheels pointed straight until you're actually executing the turn. Do not pull into the intersection while waiting for traffic to clear. When planning your van pool's route, structure it in such a way to minimize left turns, especially those requiring you to cross oncoming traffic. When possible, avoid making unprotected left turns, especially without the added safety of a dedicated left turn lane and signal light. Be aware of your passenger's safety before they're in the van and after they've left. When you're picking up or dropping off passengers, make sure you pull completely out of the flow of traffic into a clearly visible area. Avoid stopping just beyond the crest of a hill or just around a curve in the road. Avoid stopping where passengers will have to step into traffic when boarding and exiting. Do not wave exiting passengers across the road in front of you. You cannot control the actions of other drivers. Defensive driving is an attitude. It's an active awareness of traffic situations at all times. Today, defensive driving is also knowing how to keep your cool. Road rage, something we've all heard about, is a chronic problem on our nation's roadways. Please be patient and tolerant when you're behind the wheel of a VPSI van. And remember that your driving habits and your attitude are noticed, not only by the passengers within your van pool, but also by the many drivers you share the road with every day. Should you be involved in an accident, VPSI requires that you report it to your local VPSI customer service center as soon as possible. This includes accidents or incidents that may occur after hours or on weekends. Accident reporting instructions can be found in the blue and white zippered pouch labeled Important Van Pool Documents within the vehicle. Accident reports should be completed providing full details of the accident. These instructions include a sample report form illustrating the important information which must be obtained from the scene of the accident. Another important aspect of the safe operation of your vehicle is to ensure that only drivers screened and pre-approved by VPSI get behind the wheel. These individuals have been selected based on their experience, safe driving histories, and commitment to safely operate the vehicle. Operation of any VPSI vehicle by drivers not authorized by VPSI is strictly prohibited. Van pooling should be a safe, fun experience for you and your passengers. Understanding van safety is simply a matter of understanding the physics involved. As you've seen, driving our vans is different than driving a car. And like each new thing you try, it takes time and practice to get used to it. Getting used to driving your van pool means becoming more comfortable with this responsibility. But it doesn't mean growing complacent. With practice, patience, and good defensive driving habits, safely driving one of these will be like riding one of these.